Now to a subject that we've covered quite a lot over the years, and that's the nightmarish time that disabled people can have when they're travelling by train. Now, while you might hope that things have been improving in all that time, earlier this year, proposals were announced which many disability groups say might actually make things worse. Now, shortly, I'll be hearing all about that. But first, here's a reminder of one of the last times we saw just how inaccessible some trains and indeed stations can be. Back in 2018, we met Chris Stapleton, a retired IT engineer from London. He relies on his wheelchair and needs assistance at the start and the end of any train journey. But he told us he doesn't always get it, even at the end of the line. On one occasion, I got stuck on the train because the driver, not knowing I was there, shut the doors and locked them. So I was imprisoned on the train, not knowing if I was going to be carted away to the sidings or to the depot and unable to summon any sort of help. There was no one on the platform. It was completely dead. Everyone had uh, disappeared. Disabled travellers can pre-book assistance to help with getting on or indeed off trains. But Chris told us that doesn't always go to plan. He captured a typical experience of a journey for our programme. So here we're arriving at the station, pulling in. The train stops, the doors are open, and there's no one there with a ramp. People walking past. Just 22 seconds after the doors opened, the driver tries to close them again, and the train could have left the station with Chris still on board. But like many other wheelchair users that we've heard from, he's found a way to stop that happening. I've started to prop open the doors with my foot plate. Uh, the driver's continually trying to shut the doors, and we're blocking them. And now they're looking around for staff. Uh, I think the driver's got the message now because he's stopped trying to shut the doors. And here comes someone with the ramp. Success, at last. Now this was actually a good day for Chris. On many occasions, he's found himself holding the train up for much longer, waiting for help to get off. I'm really fed up with this situation. It happens again and again, and it makes me angry that I'm being treated like a second-class passenger, not worth bothering with. Doug Pawley is a disability blogger and a regular rail user from Yorkshire, whose experiences, I'm afraid, are a lot like Chris's. Oh, that's steep. Whenever I start a journey, I, I have this um, trepidation as to what will go wrong. Not, not if it will go wrong, because something will go wrong. Doug thinks that booking that all-important assistance in advance doesn't always guarantee disabled travellers will actually get it, something Chris agrees with wholeheartedly. The reality is that you can turn up at a station having booked it six weeks ago and still not be met with someone with a ramp. If the assistance doesn't arrive and you're stuck on the train, you're reliant completely on strangers to help you out or a guard if you're lucky enough to have one on the train. Now, when we first covered this story in 2018, some 30% of train services only had one member of staff on board, the driver. In the five years since, that figure has increased to 45%. But that's not the only part of rail travel facing a future with fewer personnel. Plans announced in July 2023 will see the majority of all ticket offices in England closed by the autumn of 2026, with passengers encouraged to buy tickets online or at ticket machines. But of course, many passengers worry that this also means less assistance for them. Well, I'm so pleased to say that Doug, who we saw in the film there, is here with us today. And Doug, I gather you actually came by train. So how was that journey today? Well, it was a bit stressful, to be honest. They changed the platform at the very last minute. So even though I'd booked assistance and I turned up 20 minutes early, they just announced over the tunnel at the last minute that they were changing platforms. Didn't, I didn't hear it and they didn't put it on the display board. And by the time I'd got over there, it, it was too late. It really so you missed the train time. altogether? Is yeah. Yeah, that's right. So I, I got very stressed and afraid. I was in tears on the next conductor, who was lovely and helped source everything out as much as possible. But, you know, it was already a stressful journey as it was. And then that happened. It, it was the final straw, really. I was wondering, because it's five years since we've made that film that we've just shown, uh, what has changed? What, what, is there anything good that's happened or, 
What has not changed? How do you feel about it all? There has been changes in that, in theory now, every train is accessible. It's supposed to be the 1st of January 2020, but there were various exemptions, and there still are some exemptions, some permanent ones. So, for example, they call them 158, so they're diesel trains. They don't have to be fully accessible for the toilet or for the corridor area, so it's very tight to get around. It's particularly a problem for scooter users, but not just scooter users, wheelchair users as well. Well, of course, it's inevitable we would come to the issue of ticket offices closing at stations, you know. And we're talking about the proposals made earlier this year to close hundreds of ticket offices. The Rail Delivery Group, which is the industry body for rail operators, says that these proposals would mean more staff are in hand to give face-to-face -face help with a much wider range of support. So, Doug, what would you say to that? It isn't about bringing people from behind the glass. The, my issue is that it's, in many smaller stations, the ticket office staff are the only staff on the station. So they keep facilities open, like I found that disabled toilets tend to be locked when the staff aren't around. Some stations and lifts aren't in use, or to get across the other platform, if there's, a, if there's only steps, then they can take you via the line, but they can't if they're not there, you know? And there's um, evidence that the staffing of stations will go down significantly as ticket offices are shut. So it's not so much the actual ticket office for its sale of tickets, although that is also incredibly important that I'm bothered about. It's about the lack of staff at all on the station. Now, what do you want to see for yourself and other you know, wheelchair users? I'm wanting it to be as easy to travel as anybody else. You know, we have to do so much more admin to be able to travel, so much more planning and work for it to happen. And it, is, it makes it all so difficult. And when things go wrong, it can put people off so much. Um, I, I want it to be made as every day for us to travel as anybody else. And sadly, that requires more staff. Well, Doug, we love your association with the programme, so I hope you'll keep in touch with us. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed for making that journey. Thank you so much.